All right, last bit of setup. So I can make a video on creating springs in the mechanism dynamics option. Here I have my valve train assembly. Let me turn off the display of all my datums just to remind you where we left off. Let me jump into mechanism mode by going to applications mechanism. I've got my cam connections in here along with a couple pin connections, 16 cylinder connections, one gear pair, and a simple kinematic analysis. Let's run this and so you can see that right now my pin connections are rotating the cams and the cam connections are pushing the valves up and down. This, however, is not yet realistic behavior because under the effect of gravity, the cams would push the valves down and then they would stay down. That's why we need springs to push them back up. So let's continue the last bit of setup so that we can have gravity in here and also we can have our springs work properly. Let me start off by making some changes to the valve parts. I'm going to right click on one of the instances and then choose to open the generic in its own separate window. I am not going to save that analysis I just ran. Let me turn on my datum point display once again. And so in a previous video, I created these points up here. For this particular video, let's see, I'm going to create another point. I'm going to put it in its own separate feature just so that I can control the display independently. Let me rename this feature while I'm at it just so I know what it's for. These are the cam points. And now I'm going to create another point feature for where the spring is going to attach. I'll click on the command. And then let's choose, say, the center of here should be a good connection point. I'll pick that edge, and by default, it puts it on the edge using length ratio. I can click on the on drop down list and change this to center. There I have the point, and I will call this, let me rename it. Let's call this, for simplicity, spring. Just so it appears that way on the computer screen the OK button. That's good. Let's hide this set of points. And one other thing that I need is a surface so I can redefine my cylinder connections and establish a zero reference. And I want a surface essentially that is the bottom of sort of like this, this valve lifter as the component is called. So let me find a sketch plane that I can use for creating a flat fill surface. I will turn on my datum plane display. Let's go to our layers. And then in here, let's see, do I have a default datum? Somewhere I do. Let me see if I have it at the assembly level. Nope, don't have one in the right place. That is the valve lifter part. Let us show this layer and then repaint the screen. So there I have a plane at the right location for my fill surface. To create the fill surface in assembly mode, let's go to the cut and surface overflow menu, and then to the surface fly up. Here's the fill command. And then for my sketch, I'll pick the plane for sketching. Let's then use the project command and I'll just grab the two edges. Then we can hit the check mark. And for the properties, here's another place where I can change the name of the feature. Let me call this my CYL for cylinder connection zero reference. I always like to rename the feature so that it provides some idea of my design intent to other people. Okay, let me go back to my layers. Let me hide that layer because I no longer need to see it. Reduce my screen clutter, repaint. All right, so now I have my valve set up. Since this is a family table, let's verify and hit the verify button. And really, okay, everything is a success. I am good to go. Let's close out of here and then click OK. Hop back over to my assembly window and then 
I need to see some surfaces from the skeleton model. Let me just see if I can see them from showing the skeleton. Nope, I don't see them. Let me figure out which feature it is in here. Okay, so I've got the spring surfaces here. Let me show that one and then show this one. And so I've got some surfaces in the model. Oops, still not seeing half of them. Let's try layers again. And then use the pick icon to choose just to look at the layers of this part. And for simplicity, let me just show all the layers from the part. And then turn off my datum plane display. And now I can see all the surfaces that I need. So these annular surfaces are the ones that correspond to where the springs are going to be attached. So now I will also use them as the zero reference for my cylinder connections. So let's go about editing the definition of the various components in order to define the zero references for my cylinder connections and then I'm going to edit definition of the cam to enable liftoff. And the reason I'm establishing zero references is so that I want to make it so that when I enable gravity and this valve is going to fall, it's just going to stop at this location. I don't want it just falling off to infinity. So I will edit to definition and then let's go to the placement tab, then to the translation axis for the zero references. And I'll pick this surface and this surface. Right now, the current position is 20 and some change. All I really care about is establishing a minimum and a maximum limit. The minimum limit is going to be zero, and the maximum limit is pretty much going to be this value, but I'm going to make it larger. I don't care if it goes higher than that value. I know it won't because of the cam connection, but again, I just want to make sure that this valve has a location where it can bottom out. And then I will hit the check mark. Now we can go back. I might as well turn off my point display. I don't need it at the moment. If I go to the cam connection in the model, there we go. And then edit definition from the properties tab. Here I can enable liftoff. So I can allow the cam to become separated from the valve and then click the OK button. And so now I just need to repeat that process for all of the other 15 valves in the model. So I'm going to put a cut in the video and then I will come back when that is done. And I am back. I have updated all 16 cylinder connections and all 16 cam connections. Now it is time to test this out. Let me first clean up my screen. I'm going to turn off the display of joints and cam connections. Let's also turn off gears and motors while we are at it. Where are you motors? There we go. Servo motors. Click the OK button. I also no longer need to see my skeleton. Let's hide that. And let's now define our gravity load. I will click on gravity. And let's see there. I can see the vector relative to my default coordinate system. My model is in millimeters. And so there we see that this is corresponding to 1G, 9.8 meters per second per second, or 9,800 millimeters per second per second in the negative one direction. Let's click the OK button. And now we can set up a simple dynamic analysis. Let's go to mechanism analysis. And I'm going to use the type dropdown to change from the default position to dynamic. Let me rename it this time. Let me call this my dynamic test. And let's see, we're going to have this run. Oh, wait, let me cancel out of here for a moment. I always like to set up an initial condition as opposed to a snapshot, which you can use for the initial conditions or starting point for a kinematic analysis. I'll just leave the default name. Let me use the drop down list to specify the start. Then click the OK button. Now I can create my mechanism analysis. Once again, let's change the name, dynamic test. 
Let's change the type to dynamic. Preferences, let's have this run for 16 seconds. Increase the frame rate. And for the initial condition, I will use the one that I just created. I do not need a termination condition. My motor will run from start to end. And then from the external loads tab, this is where I can enable gravity. And so if everything is set up properly, what will happen is as the cams push the pistons down, they will fall to that zero value that I defined in the cylinder connection. And then they'll just stay there because, again, that's what would happen in the real world. So let's click the run button. And they're still moving up and down. Obviously, I did something wrong. Let me figure out what's going wrong, and then I will come back. Okay, I am back. I tried a bunch of different things. Let me show you the one thing that worked. Let me edit definition of the dynamic analysis. I reduced the time just so that it ran faster because all I want in this one is for the cams to drop away. I increased the frame rate. Ah, let's see, you can increase it more. This will not fix it, but I just thought a higher frame rate would get better results. And we still have the motors. If I go to external loads, turning off gravity got the correct behavior. I don't know why. I will be filing a case with PTC tech support. But let's take a look at this now. Let me hit the run button. Let's overwrite the previous results. And the run is complete. So that's the result that I wanted, kind of. The thing that gets me here is that the cams fall away when it hits sort of like the needle point or the narrow point on the cam. Really should just drop away almost immediately, especially when I have gravity enabled. But again, I'm getting most of what I want. Now I am ready to jump into the video where I show you how to create a spring and then run the dynamic analysis and the springs will push the valves back up the way that they should behave. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.